Uh, the governor teased in his budget proposal, I don't know if this was asked earlier, um, that there's earmarked $120 million for property tax relief. Correct. Are there any conversations among lawmakers how that's going to be directed? Yeah, I, I, we talked about this a little bit earlier. I, I believe the governor did a good job of giving us the control. He said, here's the money, go find a path forward. I think that you, there's been, I know for a fact, there's been a lot of conversations about what to do. The one thing the governor did do, which I really, well, there's two things I appreciated. One, he said, we don't collect it, we don't spend it. I can't say that enough times. That's a local decisions, local elected officials decide whether your taxes go up or down, it's budget driven. But he also said, we need to solve the problem because there's an outcry and I agree with that and he gave us some money. I think that that amount, we, I think if we're careful, we can find more money other places to make that a little larger. And I think then you've got several ideas that are out there. You've got Representative Groves, which deals with the homeowner's exemption. You've got Representative Monks, which deals with some education spending. So there's several ideas. And as they work together, I think they'll find a solution that hopefully will provide some meaningful property tax relief. But in the middle of whatever we do there, we've got to be careful that we don't open the door like happened in 2006 with House Bill 1, where we cut taxes on property down to 20 cut them 20 plus percent and within a few years the local governments through their budgets raise the property taxes back up. We got to be careful that whatever we do we can strain that growth so we don't provide a one-time relief that gets sucked up again later by those locally elected officials who spend it and collect it. Mr. Speaker, it's your first year as Speaker. I think you're the longest serving member of the Idaho House here. What's a win for you this session? What do you need to get accomplished? for now in March 24th or whenever uh, pack up and hit the road? My, my goal is to try to bring everybody together. The last couple of years we've had some real factions within our caucus that have caused some issues. I, I want to bring the caucus together. I want the House to work together to find solutions. I want to focus on the areas where we have commonality that we agree on and not spend all of our time throwing bombs at each other on the other side and the stuff we don't. There's a lot of things we agree on. We ought to, we ought to bank those. We ought to work to accomplish those. And, and realizing that we're gonna agree on 90 plus percent of everything and let's, let's, let's work on those and not cut each other down. So that would be my goal to try to unite everybody, to bring everybody together. And, and you know, it, it is politics, it gets tense sometimes, but we need to be able to agree but disagree, have our debates on the floor, go to lunch together and still be friends. And that's what I'd like to accomplish. Real quick follow up, policy wise, is there anything that's on your must do list before we go home, whether it's House Bill 1, whether it's water and infrastructure, whether it's property tax, anything there's, that's there's, a hard line for there's, you? There's several of them. I want to get something done on property taxes for sure. I want to get something done on education for sure. I'm really concerned about Medicaid and we've got to do something there because in the long term if we don't we will regret it. So there's that. I'd like to get the rules resolved. For several years I've been trying to make sure that the rules are, are passed by both bodies. Rules have the effect of law and right now one chairman can put a rule in a drawer and it becomes the law of the land. I think it's important since they do become the law of the land that both bodies have a say and they're affirmatively approved by both bodies. There's another issue that you've seen me work on last year and you'll see me work on again this year and it's the issue of the Judicial Council and how we pick our judges. Idaho's got into this phase where the judges who used to run for election now just retire early and their buddies appoint somebody else to replace them. I don't think that's good policy. I think that the citizens ought to have a say, whether that's through the ballot box, if we're gonna go through another process, then I think that their elected officials ought to have more of a say than what we have now as we choose our judiciary. Nothing against judiciary, they do a good job, but I think that we could do a better job in, in choosing our replacement judges or our new judges as we go forward. So those are kind of the big ones. The water, again, like you talked about, that will be uh, really concerning because if we handle that wrong, that could be very detrimental to Idaho's economy. It's still a big piece of our economy when it comes to ag, and we do live in a desert. Thank goodness we're ahead when it comes to the water snowpack right now. Things look really good, but that can change pretty fast too. So hopefully that issue can be resolved also. Thanks, Mr. Speaker. Can you elaborate a little bit more on um, the judicial appointment replacement system and what you'd like to see change? Well, if, it were, if, I had, if I were king for the day and could pull it off, I'd have them all be elected when there's a vacancy. Uh, there's concerns with that. Other states do it where the governor appoints and then the Senate confirms, you know, reaffirms, you know, and I'm okay with that. But the system we have today, the governor's hands are tied. They send him two to four names. He gets no say really in them. And he can't say, I don't like all these names. Send me somebody else. You saw that what's happened in North Idaho the other day. So I think that we need to change it so that, you know, 
love the judiciary, but the citizens should have a say in the judiciary, just like they do in the other branch of government, the legislative branch, and just like they do in the executive branch. And so I'm more inclined to think there ought to be a vote. I don't know what would happen there. Last year, the governor vetoed the, the bill that the House and Senate passed, and I know there's been a group that's got a proposal coming forward to try to adjust it. I don't know for sure if that will be the answer, but I would still prefer to have the voters involved when we elect our judges, like they do when they elect their governor or their representatives or senators. As a follow up, um, Idaho in the past has had some pretty brutal judicial campaigns that got a little nasty. Is there a concern that that might um, lessen the public's confidence in the, in the judiciary? If, if no, I think you're headed back to those brutal campaigns if you don't solve what's going on now. Because right now a judge just retires and quite frankly, mostly judges and attorneys pick who gets to be his replacement. The voter's been left out. If you remember what's caused some of those, those issues, one of them was water, I remember that very distinctly. And, and you're gonna get back to that if we're not careful how we pick our judges. They are like us, they should stand before the voters and make their case. And I think that maybe I'm wrong, but I would much rather see it done that way than where we do it basically behind closed doors with a small group of people that is limits with the governor's ability to pick who he would think should be the best judge. Let the voters decide. Talk a little bit about the Medicaid expansion. Can you talk a little bit about what the audit will look like for that? I wish I knew. I don't know yet. But I do know that we get a look at it from top to bottom. And I do think that that was put in the law for a good reason because, you know, it, it sounded really good when it got here. And it hasn't really performed on what we were sold. You know, the voters were told it was going to do certain things that it didn't do. So hopefully when they look at that, they can see where the variance was, what caused the variance, if there's a way to fix the variance. Um, you see that the health insurance exchange, for example, is going broke. All those people that would, some of which would like to stay on the exchange are actually being forced into Medicaid. So maybe there's a way we can get some of those waivers and change some of that and push them back on to the private sector, which would be good for all of us. But ultimately, we've got to get the costs under control because if they keep skyrocketing like they are, we're all in trouble. I would hate to have to start cutting budgets and raising taxes for Medicaid expansion at the expense of our schools and everything else that the government provides for the citizens. Does the governor make a goal of having Idaho be top 10 for starting teacher pay? What do you think of the goal? Is top 10 good enough, or would you like to see a more aggressive goal? Well, I, I think it's a good goal, but I think we ought to look at also our other state employees. I think that we have a real divergence between. We've got the low end that I think is getting too much, and if we're not careful how we push the low end up, it could be at the expense of the upper end. So the devil's in the details. Would I love to see our starting salary go up? Yes, but we gotta be careful that we don't penalize those on the top end, but it's the same with the other state agencies. You know, we, a lot of those guys are way underpaid for what they do, and somehow we've gotta bring the bottom up there also. Anything else? You gonna let me go to lunch? Uh, income taxes were addressed in the special session with House Bill 1. We've heard a lot of focus on property taxes. Is there anything on sales taxes coming this year, whether that's changing the distribution or removing sales tax from food and groceries? What are you hearing? I've heard several proposals. One changes the distribution to help provide property tax relief. I've heard uh, a little bit on the, on the sales tax on food issue, but a lot of people are realizing if you take sales tax off food, they may not get anything because how are you going to know that they gave you the money back? We're going to create a new state agency to go out and tell Albertsons and everybody else what they can make on their, pro so, so now you're seeing a lot of discussions that way. I do know that there's probably a bill to come that way too. I haven't seen that one, but there'll be a lot of discussion when it comes to taxes. One of the things that the governor did say, if you did listen to him, he's willing to put forth this 120 million. But remember, if you put forth the 120 million there, that means you can't cut income and you can't cut sales because that money comes from somewhere. And remember this also, um, when you look at taxes, it's like a balloon. You hear the old analogy, you push here and it comes out there. Uh, and the question then becomes, who's the winner and who's the losers? And that's the hard part, because tax policy, in my opinion, should be fair. We should be picking winners, losers. It should be broad-based and give as much relief as we can. And when you focus on one tax type, that means somebody else is paying more on another tax type to make it work. So it'll be interesting how that works. Chairman's cognizant of it. Uh, Representative Monks is going to do a good job. Um, he's, he's, he knows the issue. He's been on the committee, and he'll do a great job there. And I know he's, he's got a learning curve, though. Your balloon comment got me thinking, is there any concern that uh, like an education savings program might negate any advances that you're able to make on property tax savings by it, it could. It depends on how you balance the budget, where the money comes from. So, 
That one there, I need to get more information on his idea there because I'm, I'm at a disadvantage on that one. I apologize. Anything else? Good, I get to go to lunch. Who's buying? <laughs> Just kidding. Thank you. <laughs>